Truth Frequency Radio Network. KTFRN. Worldwide. Hola. This is Sienna Leia inviting you to join me tonight as we navigate through the seen and the unseen. Explore external and internal realities. Expose on-world and off-world agendas. Discover a path to joy and freedom. Now, join me as we illuminate the Shadowland and reclaim our birthright as free and sovereign beings. Good evening, everyone. This is Sienna Lea. And I am here with George Kavasilis. I know most of you know George, but in case you're new to this station, George is an author, acclaimed speaker, and regular guest on the alternative radio circuit. George has had an extraordinary life with many hundreds of interactions with both benevolent and malevolent beings from many different levels of realities, both on and off world. In 2003, he took a journey with his conscious spirit through the dimensions of our universe, and he rediscovered what life in this universe is all about. He was able to once again remember who we all are, where we come from, and where we are headed. Sharing this knowledge with the world in order to assist humanity in reclaiming our sovereignty. Good evening, George. Good evening, Sienna Lai. Thank you very much for such a wonderful introduction. Uh, I have a little extra thing I want to say that I really appreciate you, George, because you have continued to stand in your truth and your knowing uh, through uh, incredible deep challenges on many levels. And to me, you're one in a million. Uh, you have uh, adjusted um, the reality of your knowing. You've admitted when things were askew. You continue to live your truth with incredible courage and authenticity. And you are a way shower for us all. I am very honored to have you on the show tonight. Well, uh, well my heart is singing with that. That's incredible. Thank you very much for that acknowledgement. I'm truly honored to be here. I'm invited onto your incredible platform to have a voice as well. Thank you very much. Uh, George, it seems that um, you continue to grow into deeper understandings. Uh, just uh, backtrack a bit. Um, uh, several years ago, you uh, shared with us uh, your incredible journey through the universes and a process of ascension as we've gone through time. That has changed, and uh, you've been very transparent about those understandings. Um, and I guess my first question is, how do you see this process now um, as, um, yeah, how do you see, how are you seeing and experiences the ascension process at this time? Yeah, the way I am experiencing it um, is it's definitely an inside job at the at this point in time. Um, predominantly, it's an inside job. So uh, the changes that are taking place through these few years at the moment are mostly internal. Uh, they, they are within us. And as the more we change internally, uh, then our inner world needs to change first, which then will have the flow on effect to our outer world. So the more we focus on our inner work, the more we end up um, changing the energetic emanation of ourselves. And then that is what will, tr uh, in turn, uh, transform the world because then it will have an outward flow on effect to our immediate environment around us, you know, with our family, with our friends, the way we interact, the way we interact with our um, natural environment, the things that we do, and then that will have a, a much greater flow and effect. It's like a ripple effect because each person has this emanation of energy and that is what flows outwardly and transforms the world. And and it happens and symbiotically with Mother Earth doing it as well. So she's not quite moving forward yet because we're not quite ready yet, if you know what I mean. And it will, it's definitely a symbiotic thing that we move together with her. 
Well, that I have felt that too, and I know a lot of the sensitives and intuitives uh, in my circle have also felt that we were given uh, a hiatus, that there were uh, a group of us on the edge of this ascension process, but we really were still contracted, corded, and outsourcing our direct connection to source into the matrix and the artificial construct, and I want to talk to you about that. And uh, we have a lot of programming that uh, people are supposed to do it for us, that this ascension was going to be something where 5D... uh, uh, you know, the portals were open, we would easily walk through. This would all be done for us, and yet uh, we weren't ready, were we, George? We weren't ready for it. She's been holding a space for how many hundreds of thousands, millions of years, uh, birthing uh, this race of uh, creators, uh, uh, conscious creators, universal creators of light, as you would say, and uh, why would she uh, implode and destroy everything at the moment when we were almost there? So I think we were a little premature in our visioning of that, which, of course, you uh, perceived that over a year ago. So I'm not even going to go down that road talking about all of that. Um, but I, I, am, I do want to talk about the fact that this process is very much on. Um, I know that many uh, people in my circles, I know that you are experiencing profound shifts um, and that there is absolutely nothing to say that uh, we are not going through a major transformation uh, into, um, well, it's beyond fifth dimensional, but uh, you've always said the platform would be in 5D. How are you seeing 5D these days? Is it, are, is 5D, uh, are we going to be anchoring 5D as we make these transformations in this dimension? Is, uh, is that what's happening? Yeah, we already are doing that, and we're doing it more and more each day. Um, okay, there's some days when you don't feel like it's happening at all. And what I've come to realize is there's just so many people that are not aware that they're actually already resonating fifth dimensional energies. It's a place where, you know, when we hold that energetic state of unconditional love in our lives, that's it. We're anchoring that, we're being that, we're doing that. Um, and the more we get to do that, the more we bring in those 5D and above energies uh, into this reality, the more we engage, let's say, in uh, new age healing modalities is the more we're engaging in the fourth dimensional uh, sort of energetic patterns. Um, and if we can go beyond those and get into this place within ourselves that helps us go to um, access these more fifth dimensional energies and above. Um, and then we're, what we're doing is, and effectively we're imploding all of the dimensions that we are, um, that are all part of our individual creations in our journey through the universe. So we're imploding all of our dimensions into this one um, location in the universe. And that is the key. And when we talked about the portals that will open up to the fifth dimension, it has been happening, but it's internal. And so when we can begin to acknowledge these internal portals into into the fifth dimension and above, um, it's amazing what actually takes place. I, I, I don't experience it all day, every day. That's not reality. The reality is I'm having moments of it, but those moments are increasing uh, regularity. It's becoming more and more uh, all the time. And when we can actually learn how to identify those energies within us, then we really truly do um, realize just how much of a transformation is taking place because the more we access the portals within, like inside of us, eventually that's going to end up leading to accessing a portal outside of us because the inner world, you know, obviously is what determines the outer world. So this is the process. So the portals are being accessed. It's just that they are internal. And, you know, going back a few years, I thought they were all going to be external. I didn't understand quite the the, the actual process. Well, (laughs) since it's never happened in the history of humanity, uh, I think we forgive you for that, George. But, (laughs) you know, but you've stepped up to awaken so many of us to the fact of who we are. And um, I, 
I am also experiencing this incredible download of joy, of, of bliss, and of uh, a sense of confidence, a sense of um, authentic power. There is uh, what we all want to feel radiantly alive and connected to our mother planet and connected to source and capable and uh, serving and full of integrity and truth and beauty and the, this energy uh, from, um, well, it's coming from a lot from Galactic Center, from the Mother, from uh, this whole new energy that's pouring in is and the new templates you talk about. And I want to ask you about those more. I'm experiencing them as well. They are just here for us to the extent we can open to them. And because we've been involved in so uh, much um, darkness that we contracted to and we are grateful for, but nonetheless, it has been very, very rough. And we have some very, very deep wounds and deep courtings, don't we? And and uh, deep, um, uh, we want to talk about the chakras and the religions. We have so many places where we're blocking this. It could be happening. It could have happened in March. It could be happening right now. But we have a big cleanup job internally. And I'm not trying to make anyone bad or wrong like it's our fault. No, this is part of the process, isn't it? To make conscious all of these dark um, experiences that unfortunately many of us are still down under them. And so we can't connect with this pure love energy. Does that make any sense? I don't know if I'm saying that in exactly the way you experience it, George. No, it does make perfect sense. And um, what I've noticed is some people uh, are not actually quite understanding when we talk about embracing the dark, what it actually means. And I found that their mindset is, um, because some people have, you know, written back and and said comments here and there and things. And um, for example, uh, one commentator said that uh, the evidence has shown them that uh, I'm totally wrong about embracing the dark and they've found, um, you know, that they were once sort of um, in line with that but now, now they've got all this new evidence showing that that's completely wrong and um, and it's not the way to go and I don't, I still don't see how you can do it any other way um, at this stage, I honestly don't and embracing the dark does not mean, um, I would say, once again, being that type of darkness in your expression. Embracing the dark does not mean becoming subservient to it. Um, when I talk about embracing the dark, it means facing it. You've got to face your darkness. And one of the best ways to face your darkness is to come from a place of unconditional love. So you face it without judgment. Um, and another really simplistic way of saying it is, just give it a big cuddle, you know, tell it that you love it and it's all okay. And it's really quite simple, isn't it? Give it a big cuddle and a snuggle and just tell it how much you love it and you're not going to judge it and it's a part of you. So we need to love all of our attributes, whether they're beautiful or they're ugly, whether they're positive or they're negative. It doesn't matter. It's all us. So... As long as we live in denial of the darkness, it will forever create an internal division within yourself. And we really need to harmonize all of our expressions, all of our creations, and everything that we've seen and everything that we've done and everything that we've been. And there is, as far as I'm concerned, to this moment, there is, I do not see any other way in, in achieving balance in life unless we embrace both the positive and the negative into our hearts and, you know, embrace and give it a big cuddle and, and bring it into that place within your heart, uh, that place of love. Well, that makes so much sense because if we are still, even we're calling it insentient, ascending into a non-duality state, then to graduate would mean to learn the lessons to bring all the fragments of self through all the polarities of contrast uh, into one being, which is us, and to be born into this higher, all-embracing state. And, I mean, there's so many pieces to this, and also the fact 
that the dark ones are living off of with, with the religion and the control grid and demonizing our sexuality and our emotions and our beingness and our sensuality uh, so that it could be fed off of by um, the, the, the dark forces that have been doing that for so long, that to truly build some kind of immunity from the dark forces to embody to take back what has become of our, um, you know, with the war and the conflict and the, the great human misery, we embody all that we are, and there's nothing left to feed on. Uh, I, does that make any sense to you, that the, um, the owning of it is our immunity, the becoming fully embodied? Yes, it is, completely. I totally, wholeheartedly agree. Uh, we can't. If we don't own it, then we are allowing someone else or something else to take control of our, our creations, to take control of those aspects of us, because our creations are, are us. So, if someone else has control of one of your creations, that means somebody else has control of a part of you. And this has been going on for so long, and the chakra system is all a part of that. We've been outsourcing our energy. We've been giving our energy away, and we've been thoroughly unconscious of it. So shadow diving is seeing where all this is happening and breaking those cords and bringing our energy back to ourselves. It's actually um, a radiantly beautiful. It can be also excruciatingly painful because... You turn over every rock, you look at every wound, but you don't stay there forever. You don't have to wallow in agony. I think Mm, that this is why people, we have been so programmed to be horrified of ourselves, whether if it's the beauty of our our brilliance or whether it's the, uh, you know, our sexuality or whether it's our woundedness or the level of pain that we've been caused to, we are horrified of coming home to our own beings. And this is... It all can be over, but this is also, we were talking about, now we're taking another step in bringing up places, interactive spaces of mutual support and helping each other uh, to overcome these things because it can be very challenging at times to do them all alone. Yeah, it is, and and that's why people uh, seem to shy away from embracing the darkness um, because they still tend to get caught up in the program of what I refer to as conditional love. That's the label I use because it's, it's only the positive side of things and that's one side of, of the charge. It's positive charge. You've got negative charge and positive charge. And if we just only stay in that positive charge, then we're only staying on basically half of the expression of life in this universe. So you're missing out on 50% of your beingness but the program here has been really strong. The, the focus of the program over thousands of years into the psyche of humanity has been that you have something that's dark and evil and awful and you should always look bad upon that and it should become your enemy and you must hate that in, to, a, to a degree, which is really ironic, really. Um, and it's a total paradox. And then you've got everybody being swayed over to this positive white love and light solution see and and so when we can take a step back and realize this psychological um, program that has been imposed into the mental framework of humanity and it's infiltrated into all these spiritual teachings and religious doctrines and cultural philosophies that we can see how they're managing to internally divide humanity they internally divide us through these programs and we need to take a step back from these programs and, and and see them for what they are and then realize that, hang on a minute, no, we need to embrace all of life, all of it, no matter who it is, no matter what it is, because when we can embrace all of the darkness within our own selves, which is what we have been and what we have done, then we are in a better place uh, to put ourselves in the shoes of the beings that are imposing these programs upon us. And then we end up actually seeing right through them. It's really empowering. You know, embracing your dark side will help you to understand exactly how these other beings and entities are going about imposing these programs onto us. It's really quite amazing how much clarity you get and and you can really see what's going on. Well, you have uh, been alien abducted, uh, 
lived more times than you could remember. You've gone through being implanted and tortured and and uh, all of these kinds of things. Uh, and somehow, uh, for the most part, you've overcome it. You had to overcome it or perish. And how did you do that? It, was it part of you owning the, the, the duality like this that gave you your force back? Because I know you had chronic fatigue. You were just completely uh, disabled for a long time. As they were vampirizing your energy and doing all these things to you. Yeah, it wasn't until about 10 years ago when I really started to come to terms with it all. So up until then, I was playing the victim with it, and I was just... I was just flying in this river of, of craziness um, until I began to, to take responsibility for it, to actually own it. And then everything started turning around. I, I still do have some difficult days. There's no, no doubt about that. I'm still partly in the game and playing the game, so to speak, um, with the information that I'm, I'm disseminating. So I'm dealing with different levels uh, within the matrix and different entities um, that I am, um, for want of a better term, really peeing off um, and, and stepping on the toes off. But that's all part of the fun. That's the game that I've got going on with them and that they've got going on with me. And, and it's all fun and games, really, on one level, um, because there's a serious side to it. But there's also, if you take it, if you just look at it from a serious point of view, it's gonna, um, it really will consume you. So, again, for me, I just made sure that I took responsibility for my experiences. You see, I came to the conclusion that uh, everything in this, and it's not just a conclusion, um, it's, a, it's a knowing, and rediscovered it when I took this journey also in 2003, that everything in this universe that takes place is a co-created experience. Everything. There is, there is nothing that takes place in this universe that is not a co-created experience. It is Everything, absolutely everything that takes place, even the creation of your soul is a co-created experience because it's a co-creation with the creator of this universe because we exist beyond this universe. That so is such a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, so your soul is actually um, created by you and the creator together. It's the higher aspect of self in this universe. There is nothing that takes place without an agreement being in place with another being. So when you go into a reality of domain uh, and you have an experience, uh, everything is an agreement that someone's going to role play, play one particular role and you're going to play another particular role and we are all role playing for one another and together we're creating these experiences because they can't be created with the other parties. But the experiences wouldn't exist if the other beings weren't playing those roles for us. If the other beings weren't facilitating those realities and those experiences, so that everything that takes place is co-created. And once we realise that, then we also realise that agreements are in place. Um, so, and then we need to take responsibility for our role in the co-created experience. So everything that we've been, you know, we've been the victim in many occasions, okay, and we really identify with victimhood because that's the most pronounced energy um, for for us at this point in time. But to get out of this victimhood mentality, we've also re got to realise that we are also the perpetrator uh, at the same time. And that we are also the student and we are also the teacher. So with every co-created experience, you've got these four main groupings. You've got the perpetrator, the victim, the teacher and the student. And if we can look at these four aspects, uh, it's, it's really quite amazing that we're actually all role-playing these different um, you know, positions within a co-created experience at any given moment. This is so huge because we are, most of us, whether we know it or not, are train wrecked in perpetrator or victim roles. We have, there have, mm. it's been such a heavy ride here. Uh, and the victim role, there are so much trauma, so much, and, and because uh, emotions have been demonized, self-expression has been demonized, um, it, we stuff these things there's a huge internal charge from the trauma that then gets courted by the dark ones and uh, so 
we don't even know where we're train wrecked. We're just conditioned to look the other way. We're conditioned to not listen to this kind of information. We don't know how powerful we are, as you always say. And I know that you are in the process. We don't need to dive way into this of the, the disclosure, the, the, the closure because, and, and I know that that last step of that is something like completely thanking these beings for doing everything that they've ever done. And we, most of us are so far from authentically being able to do that. But the end game, the ascension highway, is really when we work through those things and we really get the lessons and we, we grieve, we mourn, we feel, we pull out the contracts, we, uh, you know, there, there are different stages to this. And when we really get to the end and we recognize that we are the only ones that are holding ourselves back from ascending, from what we're holding within ourselves and that they're uh, keys to moving through this, then it's going to be game over for these. And I also know that you are um, working with people now. You're about to come out with this workbook. And I um, and we're going to uh, we'll do the Cyber Salon. That's going to be um, a step in, uh, in bringing some of these things out as well. So that uh, the next step is going to be really becoming interactive and making available to people uh, how they can do this. Because we all have a knee-jerk reaction to run from this stuff to block it out, and to run from the very place that we need to embrace. It's been conditioned into us so that we remain slaves because when we really get, we have the power to move this around, it is going to be game over. And, of course, they're attacking you at the same time as you're um, bringing in so much huge light. Uh, we have about 40 seconds here till the break. How can they get in touch with you, George? Um, right now if they want to have a session or get your book or do any of these things yeah everything can be accomplished through the one website and it's ourjourneyhome.com.au you can access the book through there you can uh, book a private session and we've made ourselves available reduced the rates and it's all we're having lots of fun with a lot of people I mean amazing results uh, um, people I'll bet are you are from the uh, we had one family whose son was We're a drug addict and was attempting suicide for a number of years. And, um, okay, we're going to break my now. Welcome back, everyone. This is Sienna Leah with Illuminating the Shadowland. I'm here with my guest tonight, George Kavasilis. We were talking uh, about uh, really getting down into this process and some of the experiences you're having doing sessions. And I would just like to say that it really does matter that a person has taken this journey. Um, I have been a uh, facilitator and therapist for 40 years, and I thoroughly realize that one can only get as far as who you're sitting in front of has gotten to. There's a, a, an energy transmission in the authenticity of and the integration of the person before you. And I would think that you would have very transformative um, abilities with, with the people you're working on now, George. You were talking about somebody who you were working with. Would, could you share more about that? Yeah, I would dearly love to because um, it... it it has so many lessons on so many levels. This just this one one individual um, circumstance. Right. Um, with this uh, young gentleman, it's, it's only a young man, um, and, and he's. Uh, I had a, a session with um, him and his um, partner and his mother recently. What, what a beautiful family they are, and uh, and I. <laughs> It really impacted me because I actually had no idea it was having, you know, what, I, what I'm sharing is, is having so much of an impact on people's lives. Now, I did to a certain degree, but it really hit home after speaking to them. And, uh, and I assure you, I had a lot of tears in, in that realisation. And, and that, uh, yeah, there was, he, he'd been 
having a difficult time with drugs and, and uh, contemplated and even, uh, I believe, attempted suicide. And the last time he uh, ended up in hospital, his mother basically said, look, you know, nothing else is working. I'm going to introduce you to George's uh, information. And so um, his mother handed him a copy of my book and he read the book and uh, he's now off the drugs. He's living a very healthy life. He's so intuitively gifted. Uh, he's an amazing young man and uh, it's, it's amazing the sense of self-worth and the value of life that he's now experiencing after having um, the realisations of being uh, exposed to the uh, information that I've been sharing. So these are the kind of turnarounds uh, that we're having, just to give you a, as, a, as a good example, there's many, many others. Uh, so I just, uh, and that's the key to it, it's the sense of self-worth uh, that we all need to realise about ourselves and the value uh, that we are so valued in this world and so we all, no matter who you think you are and how little you think of yourself, you've just got to realise just how valuable um, your wisdom and your actions and your deeds are in this world. Uh, you are so valued by so many. It is very important that we realise that about ourselves. And I love in some of your interviews and uh, some of your uh, webinars, uh, of course, and I recommend anyone who hasn't visited George's website, he has a lot of interviews and free material there uh, That because your information is very deep and very vast. I mean, this is an hour show, uh, a check-in with you, really. Uh, but if you're resonating at all, uh, with this uh, man and his information, I really suggest you dive in deep to the understanding because he has redefined the nature of who we are and uh, where we came from in such a profound way and it brings a great deal of joy and celebration and hope to the human soul uh, because this inf information has been kept hidden from us for a very long time. And also now uh, you're charting a course into excavating people into that reality. And the next step for those of you who have been listening to George and have been listening to myself is to uh, take a next step to start getting interactive with us. And that would mean, you know, booking sessions, allowing yourself to start journeying into your own incension process, or I would call the shadow lamp process. And uh, with, just uh, with that said, we will be holding a uh, cyber salon that George uh, and I will be co-hosting this Sunday. The information is on my Facebook page, Sienna Lea, and on Shadowland Forum under uh, Shadowland Cyber Salon. It gives you how to access the seminar, how to come in. That's going to be two hours uh, with George and myself with the intention of creating a field of mutual support and allowing you to start uh, looking into your own incension process with our support and help. So I really encourage people. I understand this can be scary and intimidating and a lot of you have been listening for a long time but would be really scared to show up and even say anything. And I am just invite you to come, even if you don't say anything, just to, to put your toe in the water because there are many of you who are really ready that have so much great beauty and spiritual light and you're, you're hiding. You're hiding because when you brought it out in other lifetimes, you were uh, destroyed uh, you're hiding because, just like George says, you feel so shamed and worthless that you don't think that you're worthy to show up and have a conversation. Um, I go through this all the time with people, and you are the ones that the earth is waiting for to bring through this ascension process. Mm -hmm, so, exactly. yeah, yeah, I really feel that now. Uh, um, there. So, uh, just in terms of a check-in of, how things are going on the dark side and the light. I, or if you wanted to add something that to that, George, or ever you want to take this, we have uh, 20 more minutes. Um, I know that also there's a feeling of the dark side accelerating their attack. I think it's a very hard time for people. I think that the fear level, the stress level, the toxicity level is just through the ceiling. Um, it doesn't seem like it's getting any easier, which makes people think what we're talking about is bogus. Um, can you respond at all to that? 
Yeah, that, it certainly is happening. The intensity, because we're reaching maximum compression, and the intensity is really, really getting in, you know <laughs> pronounced um, in in the global arena, and you know we've got the the, the these energetic patterns that we're working through, uh, which I've labelled the synthetic dark and the synthetic light, and we really need to, as a humanity, as a, as an individual, if you look at humanity as an individual being, as a person. Um, just as we as individuals, right, we need to work through our uh, energetic patterns ourselves. Well, humanity as a whole needs to work through its energetic patterns as well. And so because we have uh, made the decision to uh, indulge and engage and experience the, the energies of this of the uh, synthetic universe and allow them to, to come here and, and be, be an overlay over the natural and organic order of things and and also over the natural and organic order of our own uh, construct and makeup, then now it's the time that we need to address these energies. And so um, I recently did an interview uh, with uh, William Dean Garner on Superwoo Radio. I just released my latest interview with him. And in there, right at the very end of the of the uh, interview, we discuss about how, you know, it's kind of a bit of a wake-up call because a lot of people caught up in a fool's paradise. And so a lot of people have been caught up in the synthetic love and light energy and they're blissing out and they're having this really fantastic time. And and what it's doing is it's creating like, it's making people comfortably numb and they don't realise that there's a storm approaching on this planet and that storm has to do with um, and this isn't about doom and gloom. This is just being realistic here now and practical and pragmatic and honest. And, uh, you know, when you, you are at home and there's a storm approaching, are you just going to carry on with the party and like nothing's happening and just live in denial of the storm? You're going to leave your windows open. You're going to leave things lying around outside. You know, I'd like to think that you wouldn't do that, that you'd actually, okay, there's a storm pro- approaching. What do we do? Do, do need, you know, let's get grounded, let's get practical, what do we need to do? We need to start closing things up, we need to tie some things down, we need to bring some things in. You know, we've got to get realistic, grounded and practical. And the same thing, the same approach is required with what's coming with on a global scale. There is a global storm approaching and we need to realise that it's approaching, not live in denial of it and start becoming more grounded and more practical and realistic in, in our approach to it. And and one of those ways is to not allow ourselves to get caught up in all these, um, I, what I would say, new agey and airy-fairy type of spiritual teachings that continue to bliss people out. Uh, that, for me, is a fool's paradise and a very unfortunate trap. So I'm not trying to blow the wind out of people's sails and, and promote negativity and fear. This is... Um, a friend saying to you, hey, there's a storm approaching. Okay, let's start organising ourselves. Let's take stock of ourselves because what we need to do is just weather the storm. The storm is not here to stay, okay, but it has its place. It has its role. And what we need to do as individuals is prepare ourselves internally so we can actually function um, with capability and we can respond, I call it responsibility. Um, so it's a take on responsibility, but it's also we respond with ability um, and realize that when we can hold center through the storm, this global storm that's approaching, we have everything within us that it takes to get through this phase. And it's a very important phase in the journey of humanity because it's these other energies that are doing their best to impose their programs they think that it's the, you know, it's kind of like in a game of chess. It's, it's, you can call it the final move of the synthetic uh, dark energies and the synthetic light energies. It's their final strategic move. And uh, they've been manoeuvring their chess pieces behind the scenes for a very long time. And they haven't made their final move yet. And that's what everybody's waiting for, that one big domino to fall in the public arena. We've all been waiting for that. And they're not going to do it till they're ready. And I just suggest in the meantime, just get yourself ready. Start preparing and, and get in touch with those energies within you, those programs that are within you, which CNLA and, and others and myself are talking about. 
it's time to start identifying and stripping away these programs and getting back to that really authentic, genuine nature within yourself. Because when you draw on that, when you are that, when you emanate that, when you be that, in there, in that place within yourself, within your heart, soul, essence, that's where all the power is, all the knowledge and all the wisdom. Draw on that because that is everything that you need to get you through to establish yourself in this reality, to ground yourself. It's about being grounded. It's about bringing all those much greater aspects of your being, all that incredible wisdom and knowledge and all that beauty and all that love and all that light and anchor it into the world because that's the remedy. That is the remedy for the storm that's approaching. And that's going to create an incredible reality around you personally because that's going to be also your protective shield. Because remember, earlier in the program... We discussed how when you do your inner world, you prepare your inner world and you get that right, you change your inner world, then that will have a flow and effect on your outer world. So when you're in this incredible place of inner strength, inner fortitude and inner knowing and inner being and inner power, then that begins to translate to your outer world and it creates like this shield of energy around you and that protects you. It honestly, truly does because that energetic emanation is telling the universe, is telling Mother Earth that I'm, I'm good now. I'm right. I've, I've gotten through all these programs and I have found myself again. I'm now home, as a wonderful friend Kelly Lachey puts it. It's home and how I've called our company Our Journey Home. This is about going home within ourselves. And when we are home, we're in a really good, strong place. And that is what's going to get us through. And um, also, the, the earth itself, um, it, Sophia, uh, is, uh, in, in my experience, actually needing us to command her through our confidence, through this grounded, uh, full acceptance and empowerment of who we are as beings connected to the life force, connected to her, because she has been so attacked that she is awaking from her own dream in, uh, into a nightmare. And she is, we don't understand, the, now the Gnostics do understand, uh, and you have talked about it, but very few on this planet understand what's really going on, that the earth is ascending and she needs us to command her through our beingness, through our creative imagination, how the final phase of her ascension, we are co-creating with her. And this is why this is so crucially important that we do this work now. We are doing it for the whole ascension of our mother planet and for our own souls at the same time. Literally, the, the outcome has not been determined in my understanding. I don't know if you agree with that, George. It is, we are determining the outcome by the work that we do now to become fully empowered, uh, connected to the life force, honoring, being a reflection of the deep love uh, that life truly is, coming out of all the programs of oppression and of slavery and of destruction and of genocide and all the demonic and the dark um, that making the correction with Sophia um, out of this um, archontic nightmare that w w navigating with her, as John Lash would say, into this correction zone. We are very much doing that. You've always said that, John. Uh, John, <laughs> so, George, you've always said that. Um, are you feeling that alignment with Sophia now in how important it is for us to, to do this work with her? More than ever. It is just amazing how when we do find ourselves and we, like I said to you, when you find yourself internally, have a box of tissues next to you because you will then rediscover the relationship you have with this incredible woman we call Mother Earth. It is really deeply profound. And it's like, um, if I can use an analogy, when a mother is to give birth to a child in, on the human level, the, the mother might want to be giving birth, but until that baby's ready to come out, it's pretty much the birthing process is not going to happen. 
So if you can look at from the point of view of Mother Earth is hanging on, she there's part of her that, that wants this process done and done yesterday. There's part of me that wanted it done yesterday. But I came to realise I wasn't quite ready and I come to realise that humanity's not ready and that more of us need to get ourselves ready to really move this birthing process along. So the more we can take responsibility for our own lives and for ourselves and our role in this, that's that's a really big key here, is to realise that you have actually got a participatory and co-creative role in the birthing process. And what's your responsibility in that role? What what role are you playing in it? Because if you're going to sit back and just wait and wait and wait, uh, it's not really going to happen or it's going to take a, a whole lot longer and it's going to be a more unpleasant process and by the time it does come around. And by the time it does come around, it's going to happen very intensely over a short period of time. It's going to be very painful. So there's things to take stock of ourselves, okay? I'm here in this world... I chose to incarnate at this time to be here during this birthing process. So that these are the questions to ask yourself. And these are, the, these are the contemplative processes that I suggest people to go through. I highly recommend it. And ask yourself, what am I here to do? And the first thing, you know, it's like if somebody is in an airplane and uh, something goes wrong with the plane, the first thing you need to do if you've got a child with you is you've got to put your oxygen mask on first and then help your child, okay? It's the same kind of, the principle's the same. Help yourself first so then you can better help the, those around you and better help humanity and then better help the world. Get yourself sorted internally and you'd be surprised how empowering and how life-changing it is. You end up being in a really, really good place within yourself. Like, I'm going through incredible challenges at the moment that a few years ago I would have just fallen apart and lost it. But I'm not falling apart and losing it. I'm actually finding my way through these challenges better than I ever have in my life. And they're incredible challenges I have in my life right now, which I won't go into, but they're really profound and significant. And I'm dealing with them better than I ever have. Better than I ever have in such an empowered place where I'm not getting caught up in the dramas of them, that I'm actually um, a lot of the time just taking a step back and allowing these really awful energies to flow through my life, really just to flow through and let them flow through without attaching myself to them. And this is another really big key in the way we address these difficult and challenging circumstances in our life and these darker energies that are inside of us and are now coming to the surface within each and every one of us. We are still going through this purging process. And when these energies do rise up inside of us, don't push them back down. Make space in your life and allow them to flow through you. And the other thing is we don't get, you know, important not to get caught up in them and allow them to flow. Just let the process flow and you'd be surprised at what actually takes place and then how empowered and how much lighter you feel. Because when these energies are released, you're releasing these like balls and chains that you've been carrying around, not only in this lifetime, but that date back eons and eons of time. Absolutely. And I know that a lot of people listening are really feeling called that they want to participate. They want to do something and they're in difficult situations. They're often isolated. They're down under financial uh, considerations or health considerations uh, and I just encourage you to uh, to use the resources that we have George's website all the information on uh, sessions with George I have the Shadowland forum I also do sessions and uh, there's um, we also have the cyber salon I'm going to mention it one more time please go to Sienna Lee at Facebook or shadowlandforum.com George and I will be there and we are going to dive deeper into actually being present for you. Where are you at? What is the next step you can take so that you're not just hearing these words, feeling passionately inspired and not knowing what the heck is, is the next is the next step for you. So um, it's really time to do this work um, one way or the other. Yeah, what a lot of us tend to do is we look at our current situation 
And and then we say, it's helpless, it's hopeless. What could I possibly do? I can't do anything. I don't have any money. I'm broke. I'm, I'm going through this divorce. I'm relationship breakup. I'm, you know, working hard to try and raise kids and, um, you know, and there's so many people that are in these sorts of situations and they see themselves uh, they just feel helpless. And that's not the case. All we need to do is start um, working on our inner world and once we start working in our inner world and that begins to change, then what happens is our outer world starts to change. So your circumstances in the physical world also change and you um, may find new wonderful relationships. You might find that, um, you know, income arrives when you didn't expect it. You might find yourself relocating to a new place on the planet. It's just amazing the kinds of different things that do take place. So trust in the process and let things be and you will find that life will turn around for the better and then your understanding of what it is you're supposed to be doing in what I call our fundamental purpose in life which is beyond being a, a son and a daughter and a brother and a sister and a, a husband and a wife and a father and a mother and an employee and an employer and all these different roles that we play here in, on that level of life, there's this underlying energy, this underlying presence of our existence here, which I call also our great work. So our fundamental purpose is embarking on our great work. And that is the, the bigger picture stuff. You know, this is the stuff that we've come here to help humanity with. What is that? And then we go on this incredible voyage of self-discovery and realize that wow, you know, I didn't realize that I had all these talents and I didn't realize that I could do this. And all of a sudden people I'm finding are embarking on these amazing journeys on, on their fundamental purpose in life. And it's so liberating because they're finally being their true, genuine, authentic selves. All the karmic obligations of all these other relationships have been honored. Now it's time to honor ourselves and to embark on our fundamental purpose and our great work. And that is how this world will be transformed in a very short amount of time. George, do you work with people in the private sessions in regards to this? Yeah, uh, the, the way the private sessions function is I, um, it, it really is a discussion between two, you know, two people, myself and the other person. And then whatever... Um, needs to be addressed will be addressed in, in whatever way is appropriate. So it's not a hardline consultation as a practitioner and, um, and, and, a, and a patient. It's not that kind of setup. It really is a more relaxed, uh, let's have a chat about life and let's let it flow and see what, what occurs. And there's always something that comes up. There's never not anything that doesn't. Well, yeah, that and takes always, it, yeah. And, and it's just a different approach. It's a far more relaxed approach. So what we're doing is we're just letting ourselves be. And it's, and it's really wonderful. It's a lot more easy going. All right. How do they get in touch with you to, to get one of those sessions, George? Um, on the website, ourjourneyhome.com.au, there's a tab there, private sessions, and you can go through there. There's, um, we've made ourselves available for, um, from Monday through Thursday. Um, our time, which in, you know also rolls over to the Monday on our time is Sunday um, US time. Uh, so we've tried to make ourselves available for at least uh, part of the weekend there. Um, and it's, yeah, just people can go there and find their way through it. It's not a very difficult process at all. I just feel like saying, jump in, humanity. Jump in, take a risk. Uh, it's <laughs> time, you know, it's time to believe in yourself enough that that you can find a whole new uh, of your own power. And I know contacting you, George, would do that. Your website, last time. Good night, everyone. Uh, this is Sienna Lee illuminating the Shadowland. Uh, George, website. Yeah, and thank you, Sienna Lee. Big hug. And thank you to everybody listening. Ourjourneyhome.com.au. My love for you is eternal and unconditional. Thank you. Good night, everyone. 